Hello ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here. Recently on my channel I have caused quite a stir as I have made a series of videos where I have called certain games and consoles overrated, yes. So basically I made a little video about why I thought the Nintendo 64 was overrated, one why I thought Crash Bandicoot was overrated and one why I thought the GameCube was overrated. I don't think any of those um, franchises and consoles um, are bad by any stretch. I think people just put them all on pedestals higher than what I believe um, they should be credited for, I suppose. Like, um, the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube, absolutely great consoles, there's no question about that. But I do not believe either of them are close to being near the best consoles of all time. Like, there are so many more consoles out there that they've got a lot more going for them than what you can get on the GameCube or 64. Like, there's so many better options out there. So yes, that's why I think the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube are a bit overrated, essentially. It's basically because there are a lot more consoles out there you can have a lot more fun with. And I mean a bloody lot in comparison. But anyway, I've discussed that in detail in the videos about those subjects. But another question I got asked in the comment sections quite a few times as I made that, people was like, so if you think all this stuff is overrated and you're being negative and all that, what do you think's underrated then? So if you think everything's overrated, surely you must think some stuff's underrated as well. So yes, I've had a good think about that. So rather than the negativity of looking at things what people perhaps overrate too much, let's look at things what people put down too much, which are underrated. So yes, I've been reaching into my mind and trying to think about what products are underrated. And I think out of everything, perhaps the most underrated product I can think of in terms of gaming off the top of my head would probably be the Philips CDI. Like for the same reason, as I said, people online seem to praise the GameCube and the Nintendo 64. Perhaps um, give them more credit than they perhaps deserve. I'd say the CDI is at the opposite end of the spectrum and the CDI it just gets bashed essentially, like it's literally a la the laughing stock of the whole internet. And I think, although it's, n it's obviously not a great system, there's no question about that, but that doesn't mean it's not a little bit underrated. Like I said, just because uh, the CDI is a bad product, it's not necessarily the worst product, which is why, as I said, I think it perhaps is a little bit underrated. As I've said before on this channel plenty of times, YouTube's just one big echo chamber. The whole entire internet's just a big echo, echo chamber. So people will basically give a few thoughts online and then someone else will repeat those thoughts and then someone else will repeat those thoughts and then those thoughts end up being essentially one solid, I suppose, like universal opinion on something. So yes, according to the internet, the CDI is awful. And maybe I'm not actually disagreeing with that but that does not mean the product, as I said, is not underrated. So let's explore why. I'll start this off by um, talking about an Albert Einstein quote of all things. I think he said something along the lines of, of um, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, then it will live its whole life believing it is stupid. And that's basically a quote which I think kind of signifies the CDI today. The Philips CDI is judged as a games console, when it's not really a games console. It is a games console, but only in the loosest of senses. The CDI was not a games console. The CDI, I think, was marketed as um, an interactive media player, I think. Scratch that, interactive multimedia CD player. Yeah, that's the term, not a bloody games console. Although it could play games, that wasn't its primary function. So if you're basically going, ooh, the CDI is the worst games console of all time, blah, blah, blah. If you're classifying that as specifically a games console, then really you've got to bring all those old mobile phones into the picture as well. The mobile phones had lots of functions and some of their functionality was playing games. So surely you've got to classify those as game consoles as well if you're going to classify the Philips CDI as a games console. The CDI could play games, but that was um, one of the functions of the system, which um, at first, because we'll get onto it later, but at first, that was literally one of the lowest priorities for Philips, was playing games. They was actually pretty snobbish about the whole um, affair, from what I've heard, and they, what they really wanted was something more along the lines of a PC, but what they really wanted people to be using it for was for like more like for educational um, reference purposes sort of thing. So they wanted the equivalent of you using products like um, interactive encyclopedias, I suppose. Like we had Encarta back on Windows back in the day. So they wanted people basically using the CDI for, like I said, educational titles. And again, another big feature of it was its ability to play video CDs. 
So um, another major thing was for watching um, for watching films and stuff like that. Um, and what I'll say regarding that is if you actually watch um, video CDs on the CDI, you're getting close to a DVD experience to be fair. And what, when was the CDI released? I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but I think it was 1993. So that was quite a long time before anyone had DVD players. So you're going to get a much, much better experience watching a film on your Philips CDI than you're going to get with your VHS. And then your tape's not going to be chewed up either because you're watching on a CD, which is a lot better than a videotape, isn't it? So yes, as an interactive um, multimedia CD player, it's a rather good one, I suppose. I can watch a lot of films on the thing and I can watch them in style. Like I said, it's a much better experience than VHS. And if I want to use educational reference titles, then I've got those too. Although they're not much use today, obviously. So yes, whilst on the subject of... Um, Ah, oh, it's, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, interactive multimedia CD players. Um, even if we take games consoles out of the equation completely, it wasn't even the worst interactive multimedia CD player either. Like I said, there was worse ones on the market. So why the CDI gets so much more flack is ridiculous, really. I suppose it's their own fault because you've got the Zelda and the Hotel Mario game on the system, haven't you? So with all the Zeldas and the Hotel Mario, I suppose that attracts a lot of trolling, doesn't it? But like I said, there are um, a lot worse products on the market what offer the same sort of technology than the Philips CDI. Like for example, let me try and get it out, because like I said these are all mouthfuls. What was it? The Tandy Memorex Interactive System. See if you've heard of that one, that one is a worse quality product than the CDI and essentially offers the same kind of product. So yes, as I said, you've got worst, um, worst products out there which are the same as the Philips CDI. So even in, in its own field, it isn't the worst. And if we're going to bring games, well, judge it as a games console, which I don't believe it should be anyway, I've actually compiled a list of products which are definitely worse than um, the Philips CDI. Um, where did I get these from? If you're curious, basically um, Guru Larry recently done a video on uh, the worst selling games consoles of all time. So rather than simply plagiarising that information out of his video, I'm referencing the video itself. So let's go through a few of those. You had um, the Casio PV1000, uh, which was only released in Japan and sold 9,000 units, I believe. And with that one, it only had a few games. I can't remember whether he said something like 7 or 17 games. Something absolutely pathetic. So you're going to get to play a lot more games on your Philips CDI than you are with a Casio PV1000. Further to that, we've got the Action Max and the Viewmaster Interactive. And both of those systems were not CD based, they were VHS based of all things. And like I said, there were consoles in the loosest definition, much like the Philips CDI. But if you're going to judge the Philips CDI as a console, you can judge those as consoles as well. One of those, one of these systems, the Action Max, only sold 10,000 units. The Viewmaster sold 5,000 units. To put that into perspective, the CDI sold 1 million units. So the CDI was a much more successful piece of equipment. Also, which um, is possibly the worst games console of all time, which is also in uh, Larry's video, the Commodore C64 GS, which was essentially, I suppose, it was a Commodore 64, but disguised really badly and repackaged as a games console. So imagine you had the Commodore 64 keyboard, they basically just removed the keys and said, ah, oh, look, it's a games console. But what the idiots failed to do was realize with a lot of the games, what they would have for it is um, you needed a keyboard to be able to launch them. So the, the piece of equipment was so bad, you couldn't even launch the games in the first place. So we shouldn't be laughing at the CDI. We should be laughing at the Commodore 64 GS, the Viewmaster, the Action Max, the um, Casio PV 1000, and also I've got on here the, um, the Pioneer um, Laser Active, which again was the, um, a device that only sold 10,000 units, and it was um, a laser disc um, games console, again in the loosest sense. And like I said, even if we're just talking about systems which are the same as the Philips CDI, it's not the worst. Because as I said, where is it? I've actually got it written down. Oh, that's, there it is. The Tandy Memorex Visual Information System was worse. So if the Philips CDI is only a games console in the loosest sense, then why is it judged as one? Well, obviously, apart from you've obviously had now a lot of people poke fun at it. Most famously, obviously, you had all that YouTube poop back in the day because of all the Zelda stuff. And then obviously you had the angry video game nerd after that who drew even more bad press for the product. But I suppose um, 
deep down you have to blame Phillips for that as well because um, they went along with all of this um, all this bloody educational discs blah 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 and uh, the system that played um, video CDs but um, the world wasn't that interested in that to be honest so the product wasn't selling well well I say it wasn't selling well they still shifted a million units in the end that's not great but it's not the worst either but anyway because they did not shift the amount of units they wanted to they ended up trying to market the gaming side of things which that wasn't the best idea really considering that wasn't the avenue they intended to go down in the first place and because of that um, for the gaming part of the CDI the system was actually extremely underpowered like I said it was never intended to be a games console so the games we did get on it was on the whole pretty crappy I suppose but nonetheless we did get a few okay games like I can find fun with the CDI, which I'll be honest, there are consoles I cannot find any fun with. Like just to run through a few of the decent titles I found, like um, what's it? Mutant Rampage Body Slam, for example. That's not a bad game at all. It's just basically a side-scrolling beat 'em up. It's not the best side-scrolling beat 'em up ever, but it's not the worst either. Like I've definitely played worse side-scrolling beat 'em ups. So yes, you can play Mutant Rampage Body Slam on the Philips CDI. Another one, you've got a good um, port on there of the arcade game, Mad Dog McCree with um, a light gun, which is all in um, full motion video. And that is one thing the CDI could do very well. As I said, anything full motion video related, the CDI could pull off fantastically. That was definitely the system's best feature. So in terms of like um, full motion video games with a light gun, maybe the CDI offers better games on, or you can probably get better games on it than you can on any other systems right up until the Nintendo Wii I suppose which also got a port of Mad Dog McCree. Another full motion video game a lot of people tend to like which gets a lot of hype too is a game called Burn Cycle. Um, to me it just kind of reminds me of um, a really bad, well it looks like Red to Wolf to me. I love Red to Wolf but I can't get any fun out of Burn Cycle. It's, it's just not for me to be honest but other people do have fun with it. So as I'm saying that you can have fun experiences with the Philips CDI and that certainly is not the case um, for all games consoles. So again that's why it's a little bit underrated to me because it's not the worst console of all time like some people try to claim it is. It's just an interactive multimedia CD player that happens to have a few cool games on it I suppose. Like, So yes. Also if you're just somebody who likes to collect games, another subject we've gone over on this channel quite a lot, the CDI is actually really cheap to build up a collection for. Like most games on it, you can literally, if you buy them in bulk, you can get most games for a pound each. Like there's not many games consoles in today's day and age where you can get games for that cheap. And something else that's quite fun about the CDI, because it's um, basically most people only ever talk about the Zelda and Mario games for some reason, which I don't even know why people won't shut up about those. I, like I said, I've pulled them up a million times in this video because they're so overcovered and that's what people now think of when they think of the CDI, which is a little bit unfair. But anyway, there is a huge, like, well, it's not a huge library of games, but a big library of games in the CDI. Like you've got a few hundred at least. So um, you can pick those up for really cheap and you can just pop them in your disc player and then you can play them. So yes, it, you feel a little bit like an explorer when you're playing with the Philips CDI too because most of the games haven't been talked to death by that YouTube echo chamber I was complaining about earlier either. So you will be able to get new experiences which um, basically you haven't already researched or have watched content about already. So to summarise, is the Philips CDI a great games console? Well no, obviously, because as I said, it's only a games console in the loosest of sense, loosest of senses anyway. Being able to play games on it, to be fair, is just a nice little bonus, isn't it? Like I said, we don't call all those old mobile phones games consoles, do we? Or if we get DVD players where some of the menus let you play games, we don't class those as games consoles either. Or the old bloody game watches you used to get, not gamer watches, the watches with games on. Those weren't game consoles, were they? So yes, the Philips CDI, it's basically misjudged as um, a games console when really it should not be considered one of those anyway. And even if it was a games console, there's worse products on the market than that. So to summarise, please leave the CDI alone. It does not deserve the abuse it gets. They were just unfortunate enough to use some of Nintendo's absolutely top dog intellectual properties. And that is perhaps why it is such a laughing stock today rather than the quality of the product itself. So as I said, it's not a good product by any stretch. 
for gaming anyway, because that's an additional feature, but it, um, it focuses great as um, a device to watch movies on, like absolutely fantastic, far better than a VHS player, and um, if you want some weird retro experience of looking at um, educational um, encyclopedias, then you can get that on it as well. In closing, is the CDI underrated online? Absolutely. People look at it as a bad games console when really they should be looking at it as an average interactive multimedia CD player. Yeah. In a world of modern fantasy and ever changing views and computer terminology, Commodore is news. Are you keeping up with the Commodore? Because the Commodore is keeping up with you.